Yeah, so I hope you're not too tired for this talk today because it's actually a very, very interesting topic and it's something that comes very, very much from heart. Um, I want to talk about um, how you as a polyglot can actually make a difference with what you are able to do, which is speaking languages. Um, since we're here in Montreal and since it's a language conference, I wanted to do this talk in four languages. But I also, I mean, all the slides are in English anyway, but I also wanted to make sure that you understand these English. I mean, obviously, uh, you all understand English. How about French? Anybody who does not understand French? Because, I mean, we're here in Quebec, and you don't? Don't worry. Then, uh, because then I just do, like, some small little parts, because I think it's also important, right, to do also, like, to practice other languages and not only English. Um, how about Spanish? Because there will be a lot of things in Spanish, to be honest. You don't? Okay, then we will... Then we will do it together and translate a couple of videos that I have from, for you. How about German? Oh, okay, I see. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, yeah, interesting. Um, all right, yeah. So then I will do most of the parts in English and um, maybe then not German, let's see. Um, okay, yeah, so as... Some of you uh, know I am originally from Germany, but I um, left that country about nine years ago. I uh, lived in different countries in the past three years. Um, I have spent them in Mexico, uh, in Puebla, which is like in the center um, of Mexico. So not at all like beach or no, not at all. <laughs> Mountains, volcanoes. Yeah, exa so you know. Okay, great. Have you been to Mexico? Anybody else? And I'm not talking about Cancun, maybe also other parts. <laughs> yeah, good. Yeah, I can definitely recommend it. Um, very, very beautiful country, and I've learned a lot during the past years there, and not only Spanish. Um, yeah, so why do we usually learn languages? All of you know uh, different languages, and um, why is that usually, right? So I've listed, I've asked some polyglots also, and um, I've listed some of the reasons, like cultural insights, of course, right? Then maybe a lot of people, I have a language school, an online language school, and also one, like a physical one in Mexico. And um, yeah, a lot of people decide to learn a language because they want better job opportunities or whatever. Uh, I think you said this before, this, um, the mental reasons also, like mental flexibility, um, but also, yeah, in terms of like um, uh, mental health problems that you um, uh, can work on it when you learn languages, better in multitasking, uh, and also personal interest. We've heard this um, in the last talk also, like whatever, when you um, fall in love with somebody who speaks another language, for example, right, very typical reason was for me the reason to learn Spanish, actually. Um, yeah, so all these reasons, I understand them, and um, definitely I do the same. These are also my reasons, but to be honest, they're selfish, right? So usu usually we learn a language for selfish reasons. And that's okay. I don't want to say anything against that. Totally, I find this really, really okay to do that continue like that. But what if, now that you speak a couple of languages, what if you can stick to the selfish reasons, but also do something out of this, like helping other people, right? We all know that there is not only first world countries, and um, those of you uh, who know Mexico and a lot of other countries in the world, even actually here in Montreal, you see people like begging for money or um, yeah, you know that there is a lot of regions where there is no um, or almost no access to education. And I've seen that a lot in Mexico. And I thought, like, how can I, how can I do something about it, right? I mean, obviously, me just being Anya, I can't change the world. And that's also not my aim. But I believe that we or everybody of you who speak, like, different languages um, do everybody a little bit, then we can actually do something. And yeah, I want to talk about this today, um, how you can do that. Um, so many of you um, have language blogs, um, or many of you are vloggers even. Uh, I follow some of you, so I know about this. Um, and you have huge impact also on other people. Um, and yeah, many of you, including me, 
you have this message, everybody can learn a language, right? You know, when people say like, oh, you're so lucky, you're so gifted, you know how to speak so many different languages, and you say, you can also do it. But honestly, not everybody can do it, definitely not. There is areas where there's poor or no access to education, and then it's also a luxury um, to learn a language because for some it's just not affordable. And when I say that, it's not only about money, it's also about time, for example. You dedicate time to learning a language. And this is because you choose that your career is about language or whatever, but some people just have different careers and cannot dedicate time to it, and it's not, honestly, it's not within a week that you learn a language. So yeah, there is um, different reasons, but what if, for example, this awesome woman that you see here, this is in, in a street in San Miguel de Allende, which is a very, very um, touristic place um, in Mexico, and she sells those um, little things, that, like super colorful. She makes them um, by herself, and um, it's actually very touchy when you hear some of their stories. But she, for example, doesn't know any English, and most of the tourists who go to San Miguel de Allende, they don't know Spanish. Um, and so, yeah, she would like to learn English, for example, um, because this is really what she's doing. Her work that she's doing is like representing um, indigenous culture, and she actually really wants to share her culture, but she just cannot express herself. And yeah, so how can you as a polyglot help? I really believe that everybody to different in a different way uh, can do something about this. And me personally, I never really like to, I don't know, give money to people. Um, or I also do not like to like um, give money to organizations because I never know what's gonna happen with the money. And also because I don't have that much money to help everybody. But what I believe is what we can do is something that we, we know. Maybe we don't have money, but we know languages. So why couldn't we help in that way, right? And yeah, I wanna show you um, the story of a friend of mine. So the, um, the guy that you see here in the picture, his name is Leo. Leo is from Mexico, from a small town called San Mateo Solco. So a town where even like getting to this town is an adventure. Um, and this town is very famous because of blue corn. So they have blue corn. Um, the problem is that even if you have huge fields of blue corn, you cannot really live from that because prices are very low. And um, the fabrics who actually used um, the blue corn for, well, in different ways, pay very, very low prices. And um, yeah, even less the last years. So even if you have like lots of blue corn, you cannot live from that because it's not enough money. And um, so Leo, um, he had the idea to produce his own products made out of blue corn. You have any idea what can you, what do you do with blue corn? Any ideas? Tortillas, of course, tortillas, Mexico, right? So you have blue tortillas, not only the ones that you see here in Canada or in the States, you also have blue tortillas, it's very common actually. What else could you do? He's doing delicious ice cream made out of blue corn. Yeah, it's actually really um, delicious. And uh, totopes, totopes are the ones that you use for guacamole, when you eat guacamole, right? Um, and um, so a lot of things, and he decided to produce um, things out of blue corn um, and to buy blue corn because he was actually very successful with that. So that's cool. And he decided um, to produce more and more and more and more. And he wanted to help his village with that because he's actually buying from all his neighbors of the village the blue corn and he is actually buying it to very fair prices, which is like the double of what a fabric would pay for those people, right? So he's not only sharing his culture with that, he is also doing something great for the community. He helps his community with that. And so Leo, uh, his idea was to grow. 
So far, his uh, products are available in Puebla, in Mexico City, and I think since last month also in Guadalajara. But his dream is to sell those products in the States as well, um, and all over the world, but he doesn't speak English. And so he was looking for a language school to learn English. And um, yeah, it happens that he came to my language school in Mexico. And um, yeah, I could feel like with the, his reaction, like even though uh, prices are not very high at our school, like he was like, okay, muchas gracias por la información. Okay, muchas gracias, nos vemos. And I thought, this guy has something very, very interesting. And so I told him, look, tell me a little bit about your life. And when I've heard about his story, I was like, you know what? I know you can't pay the classes. Why don't you take them for free? We give you the scholarship. Take them for free, do something, because your impact actually has a huge, it's like huge impact on a lot of different things. I want to show you a little bit about Leo, so I have this little video that was made by... Este lugar es un pedacito de San Mateo Solco, comunidad ubicada a las faldas del volcán Popocatépetl. Nosotros, con lo que sabemos hacer, this is Leo. con la experiencia que ellos tienen, con nuestra materia prima, que son maíces, semillas que se cultivan en la comunidad, eh, quisimos hacer algo. Heladería Coyotitla es un proyecto cuyo producto insignia es el helado, pero no cualquiera, sino el elaborado de maíz, ya sea azul, rojo o amarillo, creado con granos que se cultivan en Osolco. El helado llevamos eh, ya dos años y medio comercializando, ha tenido muy buena aceptación. Somos los únicos que elaboramos helado de maíz azul y yo creo que en todo el mundo solo son... Elaboramos precisamente por eso, por el conocimiento que tenemos. Es normal, ¿sabes? solo los ingredientes, la forma en que, que preparamos nuestra, nuestra harina, todo eso pues, sí cambia. ¿Todos bueno. los días ustedes preparan? Eh, sí, eh, regularmente dos veces por semana. Tres veces por semana, dependiendo cómo sean las ventas. Con el afán de innovar sin perder la tradición, aquí también se elabora nieve de pulque, de mezcal y de tequín, una bebida con frutos y alcohol típica de San Mateo. Iniciamos principalmente en la comunidad, vendiendo en algunas ferias de tipo culturales y ha tenido una tal aceptación que igual nos, estamos, nos dimos la tarea de uno, de poder comercializarlo, eh, fuera de la comunidad y otro, poder emplear a nuestra, nuestra comunidad, ¿no? Como te mencioné, pues, gente que viene a Estados Unidos y complementar esto. Pero en este espacio hay para todos los gustos. No solo hay helado artesanal, sino también café, galletas de maíz, tostadas, nachos, pinole y piezas elaboradas con totomostre. Este lugar se ubica en San Pedro Cholula, en la avenida 6 Poniente, número 301. Por supuesto, nosotros no podíamos irnos sin probar el exquisito helado de maíz de la heladería Coyotitla. Así es que no pierda la oportunidad para venir a degustar todos estos productos artesanales. Con imágenes de Giovanni Palma para Puebla Noticias, Eduardo Quiterio. Así es que, buen provecho. So, buen provecho. And yeah, really, I believe that this is something awesome what he is doing. And uh, so he started taking Spanish classes. Uh, sorry, obviously not Spanish. He started taking English classes for free. And um, seeing his motivation is incredible because I teach languages for more than nine years now. And sometimes I have kids and it's more like because their parents want them to learn languages, right? And uh, seeing his motivation that comes from the bottom of his heart is actually really amazing. Um, and it makes me very, very happy. And then one day, he said, hey, why don't you come and meet the people from my village? And I was like, <laughs> how do we get there, right? And um, so it's like this, these little camionetas, like those little buses that take you there. Um, and it's an hour away from where I live. And even like the streets, it's, it's definitely an adventure. One day, whenever you want to, they what? Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. Yeah, no, but it's definitely also an adventure. And um, yeah, so then he said, let's go, let's go to, to my town. I want to show you my town. I want you to meet like um, the people from our community. And I was like, okay, very interesting. 
Uh, I will definitely do that. And me, I mean, obviously I do not look very Mexican. It was um, very, very interesting, just like the way driving there in this like public transport. And everybody started asking me like, oh, so what do you do? Like this is the closest town to the volcano, the Popocatepetl. And um, they all thought like I would, I would go and hike there to the volcano. And I was like, no, I'm actually here to visit. And they were like, oh, really? Um, yeah, very, very interesting. And I saw the community and I realized there were so many people interested in learning um, English or learning other languages. And then we decided uh, to send some of our teachers from our school there um, and pay our teachers the regular wage, um, but don't uh, charge for the classes. So we go there to this community, which is an hour away. So we go there every week. I go there once a week, and then one of my coworkers goes a second time so that they have cl two classes at least per week. And we go there one hour adventure trip. Then we stay there 90 minutes to teach, and then we go one hour again back. Um, but it's definitely worth it. It makes us extremely happy to do that. Um, yeah, another point, what could you do as a polyglot who speak, uh, how many languages do you speak? Anybody more than 10 here? Oh, there is a lot of people here this week, so anybody here? But all more than two or? Yeah, right? Amazing, really, I find this amazing. So many of you also have their blogs or uh, somehow you work online, or even if you don't, uh, just having friends on Facebook, you can raise awareness. Um, if you've seen Lindsay's talk before, uh, she was talking about that, and she has I don't know how many followers on Instagram and, and, and Facebook. And it's just also about raising awareness, because when you uh, click on I like this page, or when you even share it, or when you even talk about like people who do things that you like or whatever, um, then you raise awareness with that, and um, this really, really helps also those communities um, in like an, yeah, in a business way also to sell their products, for example. Um, so it's not only teaching or it's not only giving money and scholarships, it's also just raise awareness, and this is something that we can all do. Um, another part is to learn and to promote um, the languages, the minority languages, like for example, a lot of indigenous languages. In Puebla, there is Nahuatl. Have you heard about it? Nahuatl? Yeah, you've heard about it? Where are you from? Okay, I don't know that one. But do you know San Mateo Solco community? Yeah, it's more north. It's more. Okay. Okay, interesting that you know that. And um, yeah, so Nahuatl is still spoken. Do you know it by how many people in Puebla? So still two million, actually. Two million, that's a lot, right? And um, yeah, oh, actually here you can see a picture of uh, me in this uh, bus. And it's also super, super interesting because the people, every time I go there, and now I go there without Leo and... So people always ask, like, what do you do? And they have this rule that in this camioneta, they don't speak Spanish. So they only speak Nahuatl, which is super interesting for me. So they teach me every time a little bit. And um, yeah, they do this because it's actually um, a problem that the younger generation is not studying Nahuatl anymore. And um, even on the contrary, they speak Spanish because they don't want to feel excluded because speaking an indi indigenous language means that you're poor and nobody wants to be poor, right? So um, in this, well, in this community, they say, okay, we have to do something about this. We want to keep our language. So they even teach me a little bit of Nahuatl every time. And this is something that I've learned from as well. So I have decided, okay, they are teaching me every week a little bit. So I want to like dedicate my time to really learn it. And this is one of my... I actually wanted to study as the next thing with Italian and whatever, but I've decided, no, I should do Nahuatl. This is where I live, right? And yeah. Um, and uh, promote also those languages. We offer now from next month on in our language school Nahuatl classes for free to Mexicans. And they have, we, uh, we limit our groups always to five people. And they actually, since it's for free, and when people get something for free, they just don't say, 
They just say after a couple of weeks, maybe, oh, we don't go anymore. Um, but this one is for free, and we want them to apply. And actually, they have every time they don't go to class, they have to pay, because that makes it like a little bit worth it, right? Um, yeah, since we limit the space to like four four spots only. Um, yeah, so this is something that you could do as well. Whenever you feel like it's 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 something a minority language or a community that you want to help, talk about it, publish. Uh, it on your Instagram accounts, on your Facebook accounts, or whatever. Um, and it's actually, you think it's not a, a big deal, or it's not really an impact, but it is, definitely, trust me. Um, another part is, um, oh no, I had this video that, no, it's later, okay. Another part is that you all like to travel, right? Anybody who does not like to travel? <laughs> who knows? <laughs> Okay, so you like to travel, and um, you all like languages at the same time. So whenever you travel, try really also to get into this. I mean, I don't say that every time when you do like a South American trip and there is I don't know how many indigenous languages, um, you don't need to learn all of them. Of course not. But you can also, when you travel, um, yeah, transform your travelings into a new experience. Because every time you go like to a community, for, for example, and you talk to kids and you teach them some little words, or you ask them, so do you learn English in school? And they say, yeah, sí, pero no sé hablar. No? It's always the case, like, yeah, but I, I don't know how to speak it. And I was like, wow, you know at least one word, right? And then they say, mm, hello. <laughs> it's always like this. And then I say, okay, do you know a little bit more? Mm, my name is Carlos. Ah, okay, see? Good, good job. And so this is also something when you go and, and you look like a foreigner, this is also definitely a form of motivation. Usually kids don't like school, for example, but when they can apply in the real world what they've learned in school, um, they, I had this experience in Colombia once, and um, so I went to Santa Marta, and then a week later I got back, and the first time I was there, uh, I've met those three kids, and I talked to the mom, and I said, like, she said, like, yeah, I really want them to learn English, but they're not interested. So they talked to me, like, some words in English, and said, like, oh, that's so cool. And the next week, when I got back, they were like, can we talk more? Like, can we learn more? Can you teach us more? And they were so interested. That was so great seeing this. So whenever you travel, you can make something out of it, just talking to them in English or just showing your interest in their uh, language, for example, is also a very, very good way. Um, here I have a video of a class that we do in, in this uh, town, San Mateo Solco. And so usually um, we have at least like a little whiteboard. Uh, that day there was no whiteboard at all. Um, so we just had like some sheets of papers and um, uh, it was about fruits and vegetables. And so, yeah, this is the way we teach. And it's also not, you know, you, sometimes you just don't need a computer or you just don't need uh, to project something or whatever. It's just really about doing it the easy and old school way, but it definitely works. So I show you this video of the cast. Applause! She won the pineapple, and the joke why they were all laughing is because they do this nieve, or the ice cream made of blue corn, 
and they do actually about like a lot of like Nieves, which is like water ice, maybe you can say it that way. In yeah, slushy, slushy. So I've learned a new word today. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> thanks. And um, yeah, so this is very interesting because they made this uh, out of blue corn and then the girl said, because th she was a bit jealous that the other girl won the pineapple, right? And then she said, oh, so tomorrow you're gonna bring us all like ice cream made out of pineapple, right? And so they all wanted like a part of the pineapple, obviously. Um, yeah, so you see, it's definitely an, an awesome experience. Like every time I go there, sometimes honestly, I'm tired and honestly, I've sometimes so much work and then you feel like, you know, like something, usually like I studied business, so I, I have a master in, in international business and, and you usually you're supposed to like uh, calculate like time versus profit and is it worth it to do something, you know? Yeah. Sometimes it's not worth it to calculate and um, so sometimes I feel very tired. But every time I come back from this community, I feel like, oh, this is amazing. Like, it makes me really so happy just going there. And um, yeah, so what is actually, what are the effects of helping other people in the different ways? Teaching them, giving them scholarships, or even like learning um, the indigenous languages, or just like motivating them, sharing it on Facebook. What are the effects? And it's not just one action and one effect. Everything goes together. And um, I actually wanted to do this part in French and German, but since you were not very yeah, interested in that, as you can see some of the German, so I, I just continue in English. I hope this is okay for you. Um, so first of all, you reduce boundaries, which is very, very important because me, there are still a lot of people who tell me, what, you live in Mexico and you're still alive? <laughs> What's that, right? But it's, yeah, it definitely is the case that I, I get this like really at least once a week when I meet new people, it's crazy. Um, it takes away fears. Like for example, not even Mexicans from richer families would like go into this camioneta and drive to the Pueblo. And especially the, the, the Mexicans, they're the people telling me you can't do that. First of all, you're white. Second, you're blonde. And also, you don't speak now what? So you can't go into this community and drive with the local people for one hour. Yeah, still here, so. Um, so it takes away fears a lot. Like now, I live in a town where there's a lot of uh, foreign uh, foreigners, uh, a lot of international students, and they told me, oh, I wanna come with you, I wanna see that as well, and they start buying the product. So in the end, it had a huge impact because it's an increase of tourism. Um, it's a survival of minor languages that we, yeah, offer now, now with classes. Um, and all the languages, advantages that we have seen before, obviously, like um, your mental flexibility or you get into a new culture, this is something that you give to those people with that. Um, and also the personal development, and here is again the selfish reason. And I have to say for me, I guess, that this selfish reason how I develop uh, or my personal development and my happiness um, is definitely um, yeah, a huge effect and um, definitely the reason also, one of the reasons why I continue with that. So here I wanna, so I told the, the community, um, I told them, so yeah, I'm going actually to Montreal and then I also have this wedding in France and then I wanna see my mom in Germany and so, well anyway, I won't be here for four weeks. And then they were all a bit upset because it takes a while to get their trust, right? And uh, then they said, oh, so what are you doing there in Montreal? And I was like, well, there's a language conference. And they were like, so they all speak two languages? And I was like, most of them speak four, five, six, some of them 10, 15, and they just couldn't believe this, right? <laughs> and so they said, yeah, but we can also now speak two languages, right? Or even three was Nahuatl. And it's like, yeah, so we are also polyglots? And it's like, yeah, <laughs> kind of, right? Like uh, on the way to be a polyglot, which is cool. And then they said, so we speak English now. Can we do a video in English? Can you show them the video? And I was like, sure. <laughs> so here it is, the message coming from them. Um, yeah. 
a couple of months so far. So they had in total like maybe, they had maybe 20 English classes so far, I'd say. And you would say after 20 classes, they must understand everything. No, this is not the case, but it's also fine. I mean, we don't want to pressure them or whatever. It takes longer and it's okay. Um, yeah, so I want to present you two of my students. One of them is Andrea, and Andrea is telling you, um, maybe we have somebody, so you're a Mexican, you can actually translate it later. Um, Andrea is telling about the reasons why she is taking English classes, because obviously, it al also funny story, like at this um, little town, there is, since it's not like an official school where we're teaching, right? Because I wanted to do this in the beginning. There's this huge school, international university, called UTLAB, one of the best uh, universities and uh, actually the most expensive one. And I just, it didn't feel like right doing it with them because I know that there is, this university is a lot about money. Um, I don't know. I didn't just want to do it for publicity or whatever. It's, it's something that comes from heart. So Andrea actually says now the reason why she wants to learn English and then first she's learning herself. I am from Puebla. I am 26 years old. Me gusta aprender inglés y me interesa mucho porque el trabajo que en el que yo estoy pues lo lo necesito para explicarle a las personas extranjeras lo que yo hago que es hacer el agua artesanal y por eso me interesa mucho y me gusta. Or English, she was at least able to present herself now, and this like a couple of weeks ago, um, she was not able to do that, so that's a um, big step for her. Um, I don't know, I couldn't hear the sound very well, you can either, right? It's still very, I don't know why, I mean, on my computer, maybe if you're interested later, I should just show it to you on my computer, and there's a good sound, actually, but did you understand it or not? And why? Did you get this? Why? Yeah, she said, eh, para que yo pueda explicar a los extranjeros de lo que yo hago, mi trabajo. Yeah. So, uh, she said, like, uh, yo trabajo en artesanales, yo hago muchas cosas con mi mano y yo quiero explicar eso, yo quiero explicar el significado, yo quiero explicar a los extranjeros que es lo que yo hago. No? And right now she's not able to do that, but she will be, hopefully, maybe in a half a year or in a year, maybe. And uh, it's very, very beautiful what she's doing. It's also products made out of blue corn. Um, very, very beautiful. And then we have Fernando. I don't know if this uh, audio... <coughs> My name is Fernando. Uh, I am from Mexico. Uh, I am from Mexico. Yeah, so anybody, did you get it, what he said? And he also, he was talking about the cultural shock. He was like, yeah, so every time I see foreigners, we cannot really communicate. And, and he was doing like this, the choque cultural, no? And so this is something very, very interesting as well, what he's talking about and his mindset, like for not having a um, lot of education or a big educational background, it's really amazing the mindset of those people. And it makes me very happy that you were a little bit able uh, to meet them through this conference today. Um, yeah, so um, this is something that I wanted to share with you because I really believe and I don't want to stand here and tell you like, oh yeah, I'm the world saver or whatever. No, not at all. And I know this is just one small community uh, of the world, right? But I really believe that this could be like maybe a kind of inspiration for all of you who speak different languages to be part of this, to do something I mean, you can continue learning languages for selfish reasons. I do the same. But also, like, use this, what you have, what you've studied. And it's also, like, most of us have actually really 
also worked um, to get to this, right? And so use this, what you have achieved, and help others with that. It's, for me, even better than just like um, giving money. Um, it's something that is a very, very, very nice work. And whenever you're interested in having more information, I have here my contacts. Um, I have a, um, an account on Instagram, Facebook, or YouTube, which is called Anja from Alemania. And um, you can also uh, write me an email to anja.spilker at thelawlanguages.com. And yeah, I would like to know also, um, we still have a little bit of time, which is good. Um, if you have any experience like with traveling to other countries or learning or teaching to like, well, in, in a more like social way, um, or if you have any other ideas of how you can make this world a little better with the languages that you know. Yeah, sorry, I don't know who wants, you want to start? And do you promote them actively? Good. Very, very good. So this is also like not maybe direct teaching, but like helping them by going public. Yeah, what's your experience? But did they pay for the classes or? Nice. Yeah. Nice. What is it called? The Age of Empathy. No, financially not, no. Yeah. No, it's very, very interesting and Okay, let's try not to get to political <laughs> topics here, maybe. <laughs> okay, yeah, um, sorry. Uh, maybe you can also say your name, because that's maybe a little bit nicer, because then I, I, I'm very bad at remembering names, so I will try my best. So what's your name? Alistair? Allison, okay. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Did you get this, what you said? Because I think it's very important. Maybe the last sentence, maybe you can say it again. Exactly. It was that they're not fluent, but they like you raise interest with that and like a lot of things actually. Same when you go traveling. Obviously, like I always say, like it needs to be like a constant learning when they so for example now that I'm not there for four weeks, I've asked somebody else to to do the classes, obviously, because it's also not good if they don't have classes for four weeks. And um yeah, it's very important. There is also this one quote, maybe uh, somebody can me help me out with that. There's like Many small people can, yeah. yeah, something like this. It's it's a bit longer. It's not only just change the world, but it's exactly like this, and it's small impacts. That's why I say like even traveling, and we keep forgetting this because we enjoy traveling, which is okay. Again, do it for selfish reasons. It's fine. I do it the same way, but um, I really believe what you say is is correct. That it's the small things that can have an impact, and we shouldn't forget this. I guess. Yes, thank you. Exactly this one. Yeah, I should have used this for the presentation, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, next time. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, what's your name? Why? Like, that's weird. <laughs> Why wouldn't they accept help? Uh huh. Okay. What? Do oh, how awesome is that? That would make me. Oh, so what's it, what's your idea? What what kind of video would you like to make? Hello to San Mateo Solco, would that be good? The, the, the village is called, oh, you can just say Osolco, that's easier. It's San Mateo Osolco, but you can just say, yeah? So maybe I can just like film you and you do like the kind of like wave, hello, San Mateo Solco. Yeah? That would be cool. Well, since they're learning English, it would be better. That's such a cool idea. Okay, let's maybe, we have until 5.15, right? So we have 10 minutes. Let's maybe um, do this the last uh, five minutes, and then we have five minutes more. Stick to the German time, right? <laughs> and, um, yeah, what's, wh what's your comment or question? Cool, where? Oh, yeah. Then you know San Miguel de Allende. And the key was only language, or was there other like barriers? And that was like the biggest barrier, okay.
And the nice thing is, is yeah, especially like right now in Mexico, um, there is a lot of communities because of Trump. Um, I'm not going to this again. <laughs> but yeah, um, no, I, I just want to say like there is a lot of people, for example, this town where we go, um, Osolco, they, uh, so there is 3,000 inhabitants. The thousands of them live in the States. Um, but they still count them as like being part of the community but they haven't seen them in like 10, 15 years because obviously like they can't go back to Mexico. I mean, yeah. Um, yeah, and um, some of my students are actually really angry with those people who left because they say, we're here in Mexico and we need to help our country. I want to learn English. And none of my students, when I've asked them in the first class, why do you want to learn English? None of them said, because I want to live in the States. And I was surprised because I like expected this answer since so many Mexicans want to go to the States or to Canada, but none of them, none of them said this. And they all said like, because of, yeah, you've heard like two of their answers, right? They want to stay there and they want to like be in contact with international people and like increase, um, yeah, production of, of their products. And, and I found this very, very beautiful. So it's also not like helping people to escape from a bad situation, but really making a situation better, right? Making, yeah, improving a situation, let's say it that way. Other comments, experiences? Yeah, what's your name? Uh, my name is Fong Su. Fong Su. Okay. I can't say, to be honest. Um, I can say I'm in Mexico now for three years and my plan is definitely to stay. Um, but I'm also doing, uh, with my account, Anja from Alemania, I'm doing a lot of conferences, not to polygots, but to people, um, not even like super poor people, like regular people who just like never were very interested in people in languages. And so, um, I want also my liberty to, to do like what I like to do. Um, but I will definitely make sure every time that I can go or even if I'm away for two, three months to bring other people there. And this is also why I say like if, if we are able to motivate other people, then it doesn't matter if one day I say, okay, I can't do it anymore, then maybe I might go somewhere else. Maybe I might go to Brazil to improve my Portuguese or whatever and might do it there but then I take care that somebody else goes, right? I think that's important. Yeah, sorry, you, maybe you. Very good. Yeah? Oh, good question. Thank you for asking. Um, Zaloa is a Nahuatl word. Um, it's uh, originally spelled T-S, but the German way of pronouncing Z is Tz, so it's like Zaloa, and the original name in Nahuatl is spelled Zaloa with T-S, and it means to learn in Nahuatl. Yeah. Okay, well, this is actually my message that I wanted to share with you. So you, ha you are gifted or you uh, did a lot of effort in order to study languages. So now maybe go out and maybe change a little bit your mindset next time you go traveling. Or maybe if you do this, like, can you repeat this awesome quote? Like, many, smu many small... Perfect. Thank you very much. That was even in German. <laughs> Let's do this quick video, okay? I get my phone, and um, I'd be very happy to do this. So you can just say hello, or, or hello to Osolko, or keep going, or something like this, you know? I think that's very cool. So I, I think I would just, like, start here. Pretty cool idea. I like it a lot. Okay, video is on.
Thank you very much, guys. I think that's very, yeah, it worked. Just going to check. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, yeah, I hope to see uh, many of you tonight. I don't know if you go to the gala dinner or maybe for a drink later or otherwise tomorrow. Thank you very much and continue learning languages. See you.